All right, so the question I get a lot, and a lot of people that we have customers of right now is, what is the best supercharger to go with? Everybody always is going usually between the LSA or a Pro Charger. You know, there's a lot of turbo kits and all out there for G8s, Holdens, SSs, etc. but the majority are going from either choosing an LSA or a Pro Charger. Uh, some people think the LSA has a lower entry level cost, but in reality, it's not that much different um, once you start adding in all the extras and things like that. But I have a very good comparison today. We just dynoed a G8 with a PDS cam, LSA at about 12 to 13 pounds of boost, stock heads, and then we also dynoed an SS with a Pro Charger. 12, 13 pounds of boost. And it's making about 12, 13 pounds. We put some injectors in it, so I had to rescale those and all. Didn't want to go for more power, trying to make it safer until he upgrades the fuel system. But anyway, so I just wanted to pull those graphs up and show the difference. And the reason I want to show the difference is, is what you want out of your blower setup because they both did great today. Uh, let's see here. And what we'll pull up first is this is the all right this is i think max power on the blower car with an air filter safe air fuel 757 643 great power and i mean uh torque nice and table tabletop flat through there but as you can see the power really starts picking up up top excuse that it's probably where i just pushed in the clutch or something so it probably really made a 750 ish um we made more a little bit later but for the general idea this will get us where we needed to be all right and then we're going to compare that to the g8 both of these are there as sent home runs, meaning drivable every day, not a stupid amount of timing or real lean to just get a number on the dyno. And as you can see, the LSA car makes gobs more torque and more horsepower, up to about 5,200 RPM. And in like, a, let's give an example of 4,000 where I started sampling. It's up about 90 foot-pounds at 4,000 and 70 horsepower. So the LSA is going to be very much stronger under 5,200. Now, if you got a pro-charged car with a nice converter, you can put a 4,500 stall somewhere in here, so it doesn't matter as much. But as you can see, the LSA car is going to 60 foot better comparatively. The LSA car is going to make more torque, and the LSA car is not going to have to spend as many RPM, which is out, which is very uh, noticeable in this other side where the LSA car starts falling behind. As you can see here, at 6,400, you know, the Pro Charge car is making about 50 more horsepower and probably about the same amount of torque. Yeah, about the same. And that disparency will keep climbing as the difference. So yeah, 50 more foot pounds and 50 to 60 more horsepower up top. Also, as you can tell, the Pro Charge car would turn, actually, uh, we turned at 70,000 multiple times where the LSA car, we're shifting about 6,500 to 6,700 because it just doesn't need to make that because all the torque is making down low. So I guess long story short, the main difference on the LSA versus Pro Charge setup is, do you want your power down low or do you want your power up top? Uh, funny thing is I just took this Pro Charge car down the street and in second gear, it'll hook at 30 miles an hour and then it comes on very hard up top. Uh, the LSA car wouldn't hook, but on a prep surface, it's gonna be hard for the Pro Charge car to catch. So overall, it's just all in what you want to do. Neither one is better than the other. 
It's just if you want the torque of the LSA or the high end horsepower of the Pro Charger. So anyways, I know it's probably boring to a lot of people, but I just thought with these cars coming in, same boost levels, both on the 85, same mods, pretty close, that it'd be uh, very advantageous to put those up together on the screen and show you what the difference is. So hope that was in, uh, informative and guys have a great day.